Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Friday edition of ProLine Daily, the longest-running sports handicapping show in America. It comes to you direct from Las Vegas. We're going to talk NBA and a free baseball play and some preakness on this edition. Of course, everything going on, NBA, NHL. Jim had an NBA sweep on Sunday. Oh, I should mention John Cranton's here, and my name is Dave Koken. Jim can't be with us today, but he is definitely handicapping the games. And off an NBA sweep on Sunday with the Spurs and over, Celtics game seven. The NBA run is 115 wins and 67 losses. That is some big-time profits. Certainly is. Yeah, Jim has for Friday another three-pack on the baseball diamond, three games for 29 bucks at jimfice.com. Plus, he has a guaranteed high roller parlay. These two plays are $250 a piece at jimfice.com. You can get both for 99 bucks. And if you don't go 2-0, you're going to play right through the All-Star break free on Jim. That's how confident he is on this game. And this is a guy who's on a 115 and 67 NBA run. Get on board today at jimfice.com. Uh, I, uh, I'm on a nice little heater the last few days. Uh, if playing my, my one unit plays, that's, that's basically what I do in my personal plays. Uh, I don't deviate much from that. Uh, plus three on Tuesday, plus three on Wednesday. Uh, picked up another profit last night with a, a parlay that hit in the Mariners and Dodgers, won the Blue Jays, lost a one-run game with the Orioles. Uh, but, uh, you know, it, it's going real well right now. Uh, I like the Royals-Twins game tonight, and that is my strongest play on the board. It's available right now at the website. And I also put up the Preakness for $15. And uh, this is actually a race I've done well with over the years. I've not done well with the Derby and didn't this year, uh, but I, I have been able to do well with the Preakness, and I think I've got a, a very a, a nice value play uh, on the Preakness, $15 at jimfeist.com. So here we go, Cleveland and Boston, and normally what I'm looking for, <clears throat> it's an angle play that works really well in the playoffs, is teams that lose two games on the road and play them on the first half uh, in uh, game three, and I'm definitely thinking about doing that with the Spurs, although I'm going to need to know whether Kawhi Leonard is playing or not, obviously. Uh, the Celtics' situation with the Cavaliers is a little bit different because Boston has the home court advantage in this series by virtue of winning the number one seed. But they're now in what I would call a similar set of circumstances to a team that would normally be down two games to zero and coming back home. Look, whatever, I don't think the Celtics have a chance in this series. I don't know if they think they have a chance in this series, which is a bit troublesome. But I think whatever you're going to see out of the Celtics, you're going to get in the first half tonight. So that would be the way I would look at this game, would be to set, take the Celtics in the first half. Uh, and uh, I, I, I think that's the last thing I'll be considering in the Celtics this season because there's a good chance they're going to lose all four games this series. But, John, I think they'll play – their best basketball in the first half tonight. Yeah, I can't argue with that. You know, you have to look at the last game and wonder what what happened there. Was that a game seven hangover for the Celtics, or were they just intimidated by uh, a more experienced and better team? I think it was probably a combination of both. I did not like what I see with the Celtics' defensive performance. I mean, they had no, they had nobody that could do anything with LeBron James. Now, nobody in the league really can. Not but really. When I look at what they have available to try and throw at him. They really don't have much. They used to have Tony Allen, but he's 35 years old on another team now. Uh, and I can see LeBron doing whatever he wants in this series. He certainly had his game face on. He's motivated. He's a historical guy, too. He talks a lot about NBA history. Here they are 10-0 and now in the postseason. Uh, I agree with you. I think it's going to be a sweep. If there's one game Boston's going to have to get back in the series on, it's going to be this one. And if you like to play totals, we see the total come down a little bit to 218 and a half. However, Cleveland during the regular season, not an elite defensive team. They have been on fire offensively in the postseason against the Eastern Conference, 37-16-1 over the total. And then the Celtics at home, where they really click on offense, 9-0-1 run over the total, despite the fact that these teams, when they go head-to-head, -head, are 10-5 and under. So I wouldn't be surprised to see another up-tempo game, simply because I don't think Boston can stop Cleveland from scoring and even Kevin Love, who they wanted to get more involved in action, he was tremendous and yeah. wide open. And Boston doesn't have anybody to defend him either. And notice the Vegas odds, too, for a sweep went to plus mi or minus money, like minus 110 yeah. on Cleveland sweeping oh, sure. the series. 
That makes sense, actually. It yeah. makes a lot of sense because if they win tonight, it's really, really tough to see Boston winning a game at Cleveland. That's exactly what they're thinking. Yeah, you think they're going to lose three and four at home if they lose these first two? Unlikely. So I think they made a good number on that. Look, when we go back to, if you go back to the archives, I, I mentioned last week, I said, I think the Cavs and Spurs, uh, excuse me, the Cavs and Warriors could both sweep. And that, you know, for a fun parlay at the price prior to the series, maybe not the worst idea in the world. Now, the Golden State San Antonio game. Tomorrow, both teams will be well rested because they haven't played in a few days. But John, there's no way to handicap this game without knowing whether Leonard's going to play or not, or what his stat, or you know how healthy he is if he does play. Um, you know, I want to play the Spurs in the first half, using the same logic that I just was talking about the Cleveland Boston series. But if he's not on the court, or he's out there at fifty percent, I don't think I can do it. So. My sentiments right now, I mean, I, haven't made, I have not made a play on this game, and I'm certainly not going to do anything until I know whether he's playing. And to me, you can throw out everything else because if Leonard isn't out there, they're not winning any games. Yeah, I agree. And we haven't seen any money movement really on the games. That's because nobody knows. 212 and a half, and it's probably about what you're talking about. Leonard is the difference maker. When you look at Golden State, they're 25 and 1 straight up going back to the regular season. Talk about clicking at the right time. And they're covering numbers, 18-6-1 against the spread. Not a perfect 9-0 and against the spread on the road. Kind of the key for this, I and mean, we all talk about the newcomer, Durant, but Stephen Curry is the guy who has really been the difference maker against the Spurs. The last six meetings when Curry is healthy, there's 5-1. and one, And just look what they're doing in this series. He's 13-25 of 25 from long range. They don't, the, the, the Spurs player to defend him would be Leonard, to throw right. at him, and yet he's, he's not healthy, hasn't didn't play the last game. So in so many ways, Leonard is the key, being healthy on offense, but also going up defensively against a guy like Curry just to give the Spurs a chance here. But I'm with you. This looks like a sweep. I, I kind of think that both Cleveland and Golden State are going to be in the finals undefeated, which is going to be unprecedented. Yeah, that would be amazing. Uh, let's talk about a free play tonight. And I'm going to go to a baseball game in Atlanta between the Nationals and the Braves. Of course, a you know, really, really tough hit for the Braves, losing Freddie Freeman for an extended period of time. He's not going to need surgery, but he's going to be out for a couple of months minimum. And that's a, that's a big hit for the Braves because Freeman had been, I think, arguably the MVP in baseball so far this year. I mean, he's just been absolutely phenomenal. So they're really going to miss him. But the Braves are still going to score some runs. Everybody's going to score runs in this ballpark. I'm not suggesting it's... Coors South or Coors East or whatever, Coors Southeast. But this is a hitter's ballpark, and the ball really carries. So it's not like Turner Field was. Uh, this is going to be an offensive ballpark. You're going to start to see double-figure totals, I think, very shortly uh, in, uh, in Braves games. I think you're going to start seeing tens out there when they're playing at home. Uh, pitching tonight, R.A. Dickey. You know, he, he he's hittable, to put it mildly. And in 25 innings at home this year, he's already given up seven homers. So, you know, that's, that's a lot. And he's facing a team that can hit the baseball and hit it a long way in the Washington Nationals. Uh, Gio Gonzalez is on the mound for Washington. And there are some, you know, if you look at his base numbers, he's got a nice record, good ERA. But if you look, you know, dig a little deeper, and you'll see some red flags on Gonzalez. His control isn't good. A uh, couple of uh, notes that I have here, I have to refer to them, actually, uh, because I forgot what I was going to say. Uh, well, the walk rate is definitely alarming. And you just can't you, – you, this, this is going to be one of those ballparks where if you're walking, guys, you're going to end up getting hurt because it doesn't take much to get it out of there, and then you get a crooked number up on the board. I, you know, the Washington bullpen is a disaster right now. Total disaster. Atlanta's is okay at best. It's not a great bullpen. It's not awful in comparison to some others. But, you know, I, to me, I think you're getting value right now in playing overs in these games in Atlanta. Uh, there's no weather to speak of tonight. A very, very slight breeze blowing in, which shouldn't impact much of anything. 
uh, neither pitcher in what I would call stellar form right now. I think you've got an over here, and that's the way I played this one. Braves in Nationals over the total. Don't forget, I've got the Royals-Twins game. That's my best play tonight, and that's available right now at jimfeist.com. My Preakness selection, I'm only key. It's not a whole bunch of plays. It's just one horse. It's a decent price, and I'm going to play them across the board, and I'll leave it at that. If you want to go with the exotic wages and stuff like that, fire away, and I think this is definitely a horse that's got a great chance to hit the board, so you want to have him in there. But it's 15 bucks, and you'll get that horse right now at jimfeist.com. And if you want to get free plays every day, you can do so on tape at 888-294-1970. That's right. If you want to get free plays, if you want to get free plays sent right to your cell phone via text, just text GAME, G-A-M-E, to 25827. And remember, Friday night, Jim has that three-pack of baseball plays, all three for 29 bucks, plus that guaranteed 2-0 High Roller Parlay. Check it out at jimfeist.com. And that'll do it for the Friday edition of ProLine Daily. We'll be back on Monday to recap the weekend and look at what's ahead. Until that time, for uh, John Creighton and Jim Feist, I'm Dave Koken. Thanks for listening and, and watching, and uh, have a great Friday.